I'm Chris Basie Smith, Joe Basie's eldest daughter, and I've been asked to share some things about growing up as Joe Basie's daughter. Uh, the most frequently asked question is, wasn't it difficult for you to move around so much? And I say, no, it just made us adapt to change, which is really important in today's society. If there's one thing I can say that was a negative about being Joe Basie's daughter, is it made us naive about men. It wasn't until we left home and learned the hard way that not all men were as honest and forthright and trusting as our father. From his grandparents, my father learned the importance of hard work, honesty, justice, and respect for all individuals. He might have become a farmer in the Midwest if not for his father's need to see the world. Robert Vasey joined Teddy Roosevelt's Great White Fleet and their Goodwill Tour around the world. He met his wife, started a family, and made the U.S. Navy his career choice. Being part of a Navy family, Dad attended over a dozen schools. In high school, he spent time in the Philippines, where he learned conversational Tagalog, which he still uses today to dazzle the Arcadia staff. Dad decided to carry on his father's profession as a Naval officer. After spending two years in the Naval Reserve, as an apprentice seaman, he earned an appointment to the U.S. Naval Academy and graduated in 1939. This class is known as the Class of Stars. Soon after graduation, Dad was captivated by the call of the Submarine Corps. Overall, he served on three submarines during World War II, the R-20, the Gunnell, and the Anchor. Most of the war was spent on the USS Gunnell, commanded by Jack McCain. After successfully attacking a convoy of ships in the Yellow Sea, the American submarine USS Gunnell was worked by Japanese anti-submarine warships during a 36-hour ordeal. With explosions from depth bombs periodically jolting the submarine severely. Finally, with depleted air and battery power and no other option but to service for air, Commanding Officer Lieutenant Commander John S. McCain Jr. called his officers together and all agreed to fight it out in surface gun battle with the enemy warships. Rather than surrender, Climbing up the vertical ladder to the bridge hatch while surfacing, Lieutenant Vasey thought to himself, There must be better ways. There must be better ways. There must be a better ways to solve international issues and resolve to do something about it someday if he survived. I had uh, actually was a consultant with uh, Pepperdine University. I was living here. And uh, they had a small think tank, never got off the ground. And then I had this idea, you know, I wanted to start a think tank, looked at the U.S. relations with the Asia Pacific, mainly because of the uh, tragedy of the Vietnam War and the aftermath from the Vietnam War. Uh, where we pulled back from Vietnam. We had this three-day meeting. I had about 40 people at the seminar, and they all got very enthusiastic about uh, what we should do. And at the end, they all turned to me and said, Joe, what, should, what do you want to, we should continue, you ought to continue this forum. And what do you want to call it? <laughs> had to do a lot of quick thinking, and I said, let's call it Pacific Forum. They thought that was a great idea. Since 1975, the Pacific Forum has been following Joe's vision uh, to find a better way to get countries and people talking to one another to try to identify problems, uh, create a better understanding, uh, deal with perceptions and misperceptions, uh, all to uh, find a better way to uh, cooperate and, and get along. Uh, our mission essentially is to remind Americans why Asia still matters uh, and to remind Asians that the U.S. remains committed uh, to peace and security in the Asia Pacific region, an area that is of growing importance to us, not only strategically but politically and economically as well. Uh, all of this still following Joe's vision with guidance uh, that we get from Joe from time to time. Uh, he still uh, surfs the internet and sends us messages and still writes articles uh, and provides an inspiration to all of us. Uh, 
part of our emphasis has been on young people at the Pacific Forum. Uh, we have a young leaders program where we've brought over 400 people in the last four years, uh, young people in the ages 22 to 35, to sit in on our, our senior level meetings uh, and to both listen and learn, but also to provide a younger generation's viewpoint uh, into our senior dialogues. Uh, we're also very proud of our fellowship programs here at Pacific Forum, where we bring young people anywhere from three months to a year uh, to study and work and do research and be part of our extended staff. Uh, we have a number of different fellowships, so four that are active right now. Uh, one of those, which tonight's event is a fundraiser for, is our Kelly Fellows, named after former President Jim Kelly, uh, that focuses on Korean Peninsula research and analysis. Uh, we've had a number of Kelly Fellows, we have four in residence right now, uh, who are looking at various aspects of U.S.-Korea relations and the broader role of Korea in, in the world today. We also have a Sasakawa Peace Foundation Fellowship uh, young Americans and young Japanese who come and spend six months at the Pacific Forum uh, to learn more about the U.S.-Japan alliance and why it still matters and why it provides a foundation uh, for building better cooperation and security and stability in East Asia. We also have a Worldwide Support for Development Honda Fellowship Program uh, which brings young people to look at foreign policy in general, uh, a focus on bringing in people from less developed countries in Southeast Asia and also bringing in Europeans uh, to understand why Asia and what the U.S. does in Asia uh, matters. Uh, most importantly, and our flagship program is our VASI Fellowship Program. We've had 23 VASI Fellows from 10 different countries, uh, a number of them here in the audience tonight. Uh, and others that you will hear from or have already heard from uh, who are all dedicated to trying to improve uh, relations and improve stability in the Asia-Pacific region uh, and uh, get further guidance by having the opportunity to come and work at Pacific Forum and to get to meet and learn from Joe Vasey personally. It's your birthday, so not only we get to say thank you for all the things you have done in the past, but also we get to wish for the future. So, happy 95th birthday. Um, I really appreciate everything you've done, uh, especially through your fellowship. I truly appreciate all your help, your generous support uh, during my stay in Hawaii, and I hope um, I can visit you soon. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! In Chinese, we say, uh, 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 means I hope you have a, a longevity uh, longer than the southern mountain and uh, you have the fortune deeper than the sea. Uh, thank you very much uh, Admiral Vesey uh, for uh, having me as a Vesey Fellow. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Happy birthday, Admiral Vesey. It was a great honor to be a Vesey Fellow. Happy birthday, Admiral. Wish you healthy and joyful. Good evening. I'm sorry I'm not with you tonight to be part of this wonderful evening of celebration over the life and contributions of a truly great American, Admiral Joe Vasey. Not only is he the founder of the Pacific Forum, not only has he served his nation in war and in peace with honor and distinction, but he's also, I might tell you, a very close friend of my family. He and my father served together on a submarine in the Pacific, in the Pacific War, at a time when many went out into harm's way and some didn't return. And Admiral Vasey and my father continued to serve together off and on in the ensuing 25 or 30 years, including, as many of you know, working with my father when he was Commander-in-Chief of U.S. Forces in the Pacific. Admiral Vasey is a unique individual. And by the way, I always call him Admiral, not Joe. He has, he has continued to work on behalf of his country, from being part of our greatest generation to helping America face the challenges of a new and dynamic time in the Asia-Pacific region. I get a little sentimental when I think and talk about Admiral Vasey because of the close relationship that he and my father and their band of brothers of our greatest generation uh, forged in very difficult and challenging times. Their example, of, again, inspires me every single day of my work here in the United States Senate. So Admiral Vasey, 
I have to tell you, my mom is celebrating her 100th birthday, and so I look forward to helping celebrate your 100th. You and she come from very amazing <laughs> stock. But thank you for all you've done for America. Thank you for everything you've done for the McCain family. And thank you have done everything you have done and continue to do to ensure a brighter future and a secure nation for future generations of Americans. Thank you and God bless.